Hello friends, welcome back. I'm excited to see you. Today we're gonna to be talking about something really interesting which is blood types. There are four different blood types and we're gonna talk about why they're different. All right, so welcome back. Um, today, like I said, we're gonna talk about blood types. This will be part one and then next time we'll explore part two which will be the RH factor as well. So when we look at our blood types, we have our nice models laid out here. We see that you can be blood type A which would be the red antigens that you can see on the surface of your red blood cells. You can be type B, which would be the yellow in this case. They're not actually red and yellow, I'm just giving you a demonstration. But type B would be the yellow. Type AB has both antigens. You can see it has the yellow and the red, so that would be type AB. And then type O actually has none, so that's a red blood cell that doesn't have either the antigen A or the B. So this is really interesting, and we think about why this is important has to do with the fact that if you are given a transfusion for some reason, so say you have a major accident or you're bleeding out, you have an illness or an injury, the hospital has to know which type of blood to give you. And the reason that they need to know which type of blood to give you has to do with these little guys here, which are antibodies. So the antibodies are circulating around in your blood supply as well. And what you can see is that this antibody for a person that has type A is the yellow color. So this is an antibody that actually would be attracted to type B blood. So this person that has type A has the antibodies for B circulating around. So then we see that the opposite is true for a person that has type B. So a person that has type B blood, those B antigens on the red blood cells, they have the antibody that is for type A. So you see that would fit over here. This is gonna be the red antibody. So the person that has type AB blood, they actually have both the antigens. They have the A's and the B's. So that means they don't have either of those antibodies. So they don't have any of them. And we look at type O, type O, because they have no antigens, so they have those naked red blood cells, they actually have both. So they have antibodies to both the A and B. Again, those would fit on top of those antigens and surface there. So the reason that these antibodies become important, again, has to do with transfusions. So when you're getting a transfusion of blood in the hospital, if you're type A, they can give you type A blood. The other thing they can give you is they can also give you type O blood because type O blood doesn't have any antigens at all. The problem arises if I am a person with type A blood, if they give me type B blood, this is the problem. I have these antibodies circulating around. What they will do is actually bind to those new red blood cells that they have given me. They're going to start agglutinating or creating these large clumps, and what happens is they start to break down into little pieces. Those little pieces can actually clog the very tiny little arteries and capillaries that we have and can lead to kidney function loss. They can lead to lung function loss, heart function loss, all due to these uh, transfusion reactions. So that's a major problem. Um, same thing here. Again, if we had type B blood, if they give me type A, it's going to bind to this and do the same thing. Transfusion reaction can lead to, to death ultimately. Um, what we want to know and keep in mind is that there are what we describe as universal donors and universal acceptors when we think about blood types. So type O, if you're a type O blood and you have given blood before, they will call you all the time, right, to give blood because you are a universal donor. Now, like I said, in part two, we're going to talk about the RH factor. That's the positive and negative part of our blood type, so we'll get there. But type O is the type that can give to any of these. The unfortunate thing about people with type O is that they have to take type O themselves because, again, they have these two antibodies. They can't take any of these other blood types because they will have that transfusion reaction. So type O, universal donor, but they have to take only type O themselves. The best type of blood type to have, which is actually fairly rare, is type AB. So type AB, again, because they have both of the antigens, they don't have any of those antibodies. What that means is that they can take blood from anybody, right? They can take blood from AB, from O, from B or A, right? So that's a great blood type to have because if you have that, you can take it from any of these other people. So we describe people with type AB as universal acceptors. Okay, so as we said again, you can be type A, type B, type AB, or O. And again, we think about these blood types um, in reference to what's going on with your red blood cells. Remember, red blood cells are important for carrying oxygen out to your tissues, and they also carry some carbon dioxide back out, so essential factors. We wanna make sure we're getting the right type. It's a good idea to know what blood type you have, what blood type your family members have. Keep that written down somewhere, maybe in your phone, um, so that we make sure that we get that right type. Um, remember again that these blood types also can be either RH positive or RH negative, which we'll be talking about in part two, and that's blood types, and that's definitely not scary.